Hi there guys, welcome back to another c -sharp tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll, we will be covering classes. Okay, uh, the first question you might be asking, what are classes, uh, why we should use them, and so on. So, basically, basically, the classes are a form of, uh, let's say, structures and uh, functions uh, that are encapsulated in a way that allows you to use them again and again. The main goal, uh, in my opinion, the main goal of classes is to allow code to use. What do I mean by that? Well, in many cases, when you want to develop applications like uh, Windows Forms applications and stuff like that, uh, you can't understand all the code uh, that Microsoft wrote uh, in the .NET library, okay? Uh, it will take you a long time to understand and work with it efficiently if you have the source code and you want to modify it. Instead, they don't give you that. They will uh, hand you a manual explaining how it is structures and in, structured into classes and how you use these classes you don't see the original source code of the library or the sdk they gave you instead you only see the lls and uh, using the documentation you will understand what are these classes how they work in order to build on them uh, to develop windows forms application or to develop asp.net applications and so on. So far, what I've explained might not be clear to you. That's not a problem. Things will be much more clearer in a second. So the first thing we're going to do here, we have this very simple program. It's an empty project. We will try to create kind of a structure, not exactly a structure. We'll create an empty class. We will make it to store a person's name and a person's age. Okay. So now, uh, I'm going to come here and select Add, and then uh, a new class. And I'm going to call this Person, sorry, Person Class. There we go. And I'm going to add here. There we go. So we have Class, Person, Class. Okay. What does this mean? We are defining class. This is the name of the class. Uh, these brackets are be, uh, being used to specify what this uh, class is. Okay? Whatever goes between these two brackets will tell you what the class is. So I can write here public string person name. This is what they call a property. Okay? Or, uh, yeah, this is uh, what they call a property. So we have a property called a person name. This is the name of a person. So let's try to uh, use this class. Okay, this is sufficient enough and we can use it. Let's try to use this class. So I'm going to save this here. Let's go to the, our, to the program. So I'm going to say here person class p1 equals a new person class. Now, what does this line of code mean? This part here tells the compiler that, or the computer that, define a variable called p1 that can store an object of type person class. Uh, in other words, p1 can store whatever person class is. Okay, things will be much more clear later on. Now, what does this part mean? The new keyword tells the computer to allocate resources, okay, uh, for this type of uh, class. Now, to explain things a little bit uh, more, think about the class like a blueprint for a car, okay? Think of this like a blueprint for a car. Uh, here, all you have is the design. You don't have the actual car yet. You don't have the car. And this statement, this statement tells you that P1, uh, okay, this is P1, this is a variable. This part, 
tells the computer to create the actual car based on the blueprint here. It's like you are asking the car company to manufacture a car. When the computer sees the new and the class name, it goes and allocates memory in order to store data. If you say, for example, person class P1, what does that mean? It means P1 can store a person class, but it doesn't store anything. It's like, well, you cannot drive a car, but you don't have one yet. This is what it means. When we say equals a new person class, at that very moment when the computer sees the new and the followed by the class name, it will actually allocate resources from the computer memory and make P1 points to, to that. It, it is like, let's go to the, uh, back to the car example, it's like you know how to drive a car and now you have an actual car. This is what it means. Now let us try to access the members or store values inside P1. So how do you do that? You write the object name. By the way, uh, the actual allocated resources for the class uh, here in this example, this is called an object. This is called the class and this, the returned value of, from this one is called an object and it's going to be stored here. So here you write the object name followed by dot and then you access any member you want. In this case, it's the uh, person name. And we are going to say Smith. So far, so good. Okay. And now, what are we going to do? We want, for example, this is display the result. So we're going to say system console right line. Uh, the name is plus one dot person name and finally we have system console read line so far so good okay so we created an object we filled the object with with data and then here we displayed the value from that object and that's it so let's try this out and we can see if the name is Smith no problem now let us improve this a little bit. One of the things that classes allows you to do is to combine variables and functions together. But the functions will work on the variables in the class. Let's see how this is done. I'll go to the class here and add a function. Okay, so I'm going to say public void print and say system console right line name followed by person name you can see now this function doesn't receive any parameter however I can use person name why because it's part of the class so this means that this function will work on the object and will access the members of the object directly. Okay, so let's go back to our code and see how we can use this print function. Now, I'm going to remove this line of code and I'm going to say p1 followed by dot. Now, what, what can you see here is that there is a print method. Okay, so I'm going to say p1.print. There we go. So, if you think about this code, well, define an object, fill the person name and the object with the value Smith, and then ask the object to print its data. This is what it means. So let us try this. You can see here, name Smith. Okay. Let us improve this a little. What if we want to, for example, read the data directly. I mean, sorry, what if we want the object to read the data for itself? So we can add another method here public void read, and we're going to say 
person name equal system console read line. Maybe we need to put a friendly message here. So system console write your name. Okay, that's very simple. So let's go to the program here. I gotta replace this with p1.read. Now check this out. We created an object. We ask the object to read it uh, to read data, and then we are asking the object to print the data. Okay, so we can save this, and I can run this here. Also, you can see read name Smith. You get Smith. No problem. But if we have two people, well, basically, we can define this one here. Okay, so this is P2, this is another object. We are reading the data for the second object and then we are printing it right away. So let me run this. Smith. Name is Smith. And Todd. Name is Todd. No problem. Okay, so let us make things a little bit more complicated. So we will come here. I'm going to add another member to make it, this function a little bit more useful. I'm going to say public int age, semicolon. And then in the print method, I'm going to improve this one a little and add with age, or maybe just a comma age. And go age dot to string. There we go. So this is the line of code. So it's going to look like this. No problem. So we are printing both variables here. And uh, as for reading, so we can say system console write enter age. And then we're going to say age equal in dot parse system console read line. Okay, so look what I've done here. I added a variable and I updated the print and read method to reflect uh, the, uh, this variable, right? And now we're, uh, I'm gonna run the same code. This code hasn't been changed at all. So I'm gonna run this. So we have to enter the name. So we enter Smith. Now we have to enter the age, Smith's age. So let's say 30. Name is Smith, age 30. Now we enter Todd, his age 25. We can get Todd and 25. So, as you can see, the main program wasn't changed at all, right? Uh, we didn't have to change the parameters of the functions here at all, right? Uh, we didn't have to worry uh, about uh, the addition of variables except in the class itself. We just updated the class and the whole program get updated. Not only that, we already know that the print works on these two variables and read works on these two variables. We didn't have to worry about the parameters. If you remember in the previous tutorials when we created functions, we had to worry about passing the first parameter followed by the second parameter correctly, the data type for each, and so on. In our case here, you don't have to worry because these methods have access to the variables of the object itself. So you don't have to worry about that. Not only this, you can see that this program is much easier to read and understand. Here you are defining uh, a person. You are reading the person's information and displaying them. You are defining another person, reading his information or her information and printing them. That's it. Uh, it's as simple as that. Okay? So, this is a very short introduction to classes. There's a lot of things we haven't covered. We are at the very beginning. Uh, in the next set of tutorial, things will be much more clear. We will work a little, uh, with a little bit more complex code and uh, understand this more. Okay? Uh, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye.